Let's start with Drew Baglino. Um, one of only four named executive officers at Tesla. I thought this was a surprise. And what sources told me is that he resigned. He wasn't laid off as part of the 10% cut. What else do, do you know? Yeah, I, I know uh, less than you, you know, Ed, but I do have to sort of speculate about, you know, the, the extent to which this may be about, you know, a difference of opinion on the direction of the company. This, you know, this, these, this news comes shortly after uh, reports that the, the company is, uh, you know, maybe putting aside its work on a, a cheaper vehicle and focusing efforts on a robo-taxi. I think Elon Musk, uh, you know, at first uh, called that a report by Reuters false and then, you know, seemed to sort of lend credence to it by scheduling an introduction of a, a robo-taxi months from now, uh, which, you know, sort of suggests that, uh, you know, he, he's focused on that. And, mm -hmm. you know, that raises questions about whether, uh, wh whether Baglino thought that's the right move, whether... Rohan Patel uh, thinks that's the right move. After all, uh, he's going to be the person in, or would have been the person in Washington who would have to sort of justify that to, to regulators. And whether or not uh, Tesla is really ready to, uh, to put that forward is, is a question after years and years of the company uh, talking about having robo-taxis, or at least Musk talking about having robo-taxis, yes. when they haven't. All of this is sort of trying to be a level of prioritization or anxiety that is among investors at the moment. Many would say, okay, cutting down on expenses, on costs, is something that is necessary in the context of EV sales more broadly, Craig. What could be, therefore, be really unnerving the investor base right now when you have SVPs leaving? Is it more the concern about the handing over of power, ultimately, any sort of fact that Musk currently leads and has done since 2008? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's this concern about, you know, not knowing what the plan is, right? And, and this is not, uh, you know, just a, a story that has only surfaced lately. Uh, you know, we go back to the Walter Isaacson biography uh, months ago, and one of the more compelling bits within that book was this idea that there was real difference at the top of, of Tesla as to whether or not, uh, you know, they should design this next generation vehicle with or without a steering wheel. And you had within that book, you know, this really uh, compelling section of, of, you know, executives having to kind of talk Musk out of this idea that they could just, you know, design the car without a steering wheel and count on the idea that the technology was ready. And I think that's something that, you know, we've seen for, for some time, this idea that, you know, Musk has, has really sort of been out on a limb in terms of how quickly this company will be able to put self-driving cars on the road and what other executives have said, including, you know, engineers that have had to testify in lawsuits related to people losing their lives because they put too much trust into Tesla's driver assistance system. So right. this is something that's really uh, tricky if, if you're an executive who has to kind of, you know, square that circle. Yeah. Uh, Craig, quickly, I think let's just re recap the basics. Ten percent of the workforce to be cut. How many people is that and where is it? Yeah, so this is a company that ended last year with over 140,000 people. So assuming uh, this is company-wide, we know it's uh, global, according to Musk's email to staff, uh, that would be more than 14,000 people. Uh, we're careful on that because Musk has been a little bit uh, all over the place with his messaging in the past when he's made job cuts.